Is it wrong to check someone's phone if you know that they're cheating, but you want to check it because you want proof? That's it. So it's a karaoke okay. place. Okay, recital, yeah. And as you're singing with the mic, you can pick a girl, any girl, that's standing in line. Okay. And she's using your meat stick to sing, in a sense. My parents didn't like me using the word you. Me neither. To them. Uh, really? Yeah, I you too? I was not allowed to. Yeah, when I was like, oh, do you or you? And they're like, no. Yeah, it's no. disrespectful. Uh, yes. Everybody. Welcome to Flow and Tell. And today I have a guest, my very first guest on anything I've ever done. Welcome, Ty. Hello, my name is Ty. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Flo. I hope uh, we have a good podcast today. Yeah, I hope so too. This is normally we just talk together as friends. And so it's kind of nice to be able to film it. We decided to do that together. Yeah, but now there's pressure. There's no pressure. <laughs> no, there's pressure. <laughs> You're now I, I really got to watch what I say. <laughs> but I mean, okay. your podcast is prefaced with unhinged. Exactly. Right. So it doesn't so, matter what we say. I mean, I'm not the unhinged one between the two of us. But No. No, today's Wednesday. So it's supposed to be a wholesome. That's why I'm here. No. I'm he's supposed to be here on Friday. Hey. Because <laughs> he's a fuck boy. <laughs> <laughs> Today we'll we'll get into talking about relationships and I've got a bunch of questions that we could talk about together. And actually the reason why me and Ty actually got really close is because I was going through a breakup and he was going through his own breakup as well. And together we were talking things through and then he's taught me a lot about relationships. So I thought maybe he could teach those of you guys who might have the same questions and thoughts that I did. And I would say he's changed me a lot for the better. So if there's anything that we could take away from this podcast, it would be a lot more from him than me. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, I got thoughts, I guess. But at the end yeah, of the I day, got thoughts. At the, at the, at the, <laughs> y'all relax. I was gonna say, at the end of the day, I'm single. So you take take the, what information you will. Like I don't got said, thoughts, though. Thoughts. No, no, and no, he's no. single. So those no. two go together really well. <laughs> Really quickly before we jump in, okay. have you ever heard of this place called Recital? No, what's that? It's in California, in K Town, LA, and it's a place perfect for you. Okay, okay, why? First, you love to sing, right? So it's a karaoke okay. place. Okay, Recital, yeah. And as you're singing with the mic, you can pick a girl, any girl that's standing in line. Okay. And she's using your meat stick to sing, in a sense. So it's a place where like, it's almost like those massage places, but it's a place where you can pick the person that you want to sing with. I think it's like more than one person, too. And they're like doing dirty stuff with and you're singing. It's karaoke, but with like ladies and it's like sus. Bro, like, do they expect you to multitask to like sing while you're <laughs> while you're getting a you imagine? Like immediately, if I'm singing, someone's gonna be, I'm done. I'm done singing. <laughs> no, but you—that's a real thing. No way. Yeah. So it's people in California. do that. Yeah. If so you they, look up the reviews, they're legit singing like the whole time. Yeah. No, well, like, and then you can probably have sex with them, and then you both sing together. Oh, okay. So it's like a, a service. Exactly. Like that particular service. Yeah. That's wild. Right. So where is? K Town? K Town. Uh, yeah, you? I'm just interested. I have some friends that Liar. Are, from, <laughs> are from there and I'm sure they would be interested. I'm sure. Are you nervous? I'm sure. Nervous? No, no, not at all. <laughs> okay. All right. Cause this is something legitimate that I was like, oh, maybe I should ask Ty this. Okay. But like, does it is it wrong to check someone's phone if you know that they're cheating? But you want to check it because you want proof. That's it. You want proof. Just just to make sure. Like, you know in your attention that they're cheating, but you want proof. You so know you that they're check. cheating for sure. Like, your intuition is telling you. Oh, you're into it, but you don't know for sure. No. You saw this way you have to check just to make sure. So you have no evidence. No one's told you anything. It's, it's just, just a gut feeling. It's just your gut feeling. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if you should check. I think it's a conversation that needs to be had. Because if you chose that partner, right, I'd assume or I would hope that you would choose that partner based on a lot of trust. Yes, yeah? but trust is earned. 
<laughs> right? As I would assume that you, they would earn your trust before you went out with them. Okay, but sometimes you don't know as you're dating them for like months. Okay. And then okay. let's just say like sometimes you're you see marriage couples at 40 ish and they start to start to cheat a little bit. Uh, well, I guess my question would be, do you trust this person? Do you trust them? Well, you do trust them. But then let's just say randomly you notice that they're they're like on their phone and texting and smiling. And then you're like, <laughs> why are you smiling? And what do they say? <laughs> Hypothetically. But they'll just be like, oh, I don't know. A friend just texted me. I thought something was funny. And I'll be like, oh, can I see? And they're like, why? Why do you want to see? This is from experience, by the way. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's alarming but though. i did trust i do trust that person or i did and then um he was like at that time he was like just texting this best friend he okay. called and they've been friends since like college okay and i dated him after he was done college and then he was like they would text and he would always laugh and giggle and stuff like that and then obviously when i saw her photo on facebook she was in a bikini so that threw me off a little bit. I was like, oh, what kind of girl is this, you know? Mm -hmm. And so then I think like a lot of things had led up to me feeling like I couldn't trust him as a gut feeling. In your gut. Well, whenever I'm in a relationship, I put all my trust into this person because I feel like I've, I would have vetted them enough to put this trust in. And if there were situations that came up where it's like I'm starting to doubt my own trust, then I have to talk to them. Like, I couldn't just keep it in. Would you I, check their stuff? I probably wouldn't check their stuff. Why? Just because I would rather talk to them than check their stuff. I'd rather try to gauge where they're at by interacting with them personally. And if they're like, so like, for example, you and your ex, like, if you were to ask them, hey, are you doing this? Like, why are you doing this? Or why are you acting this way? Are you doing X? And he responds with aggression, then that's a red flag defensiveness too yeah, yeah defensiveness and aggression that's a red flag then you know for sure then i know like pretty like i'm pretty confident more now in in my stance of what's going on here okay so how would they respond if they were actually telling the truth i mean they'd be just open to calmly discuss it they're like oh why are you feel like like the empathy right so like if you t if you told your partner or if i if my partner told me like hey i'm feeling this way about this like because of xyz uh-huh I would explain to them, you know, that I'm not doing that and try to understand why they're feeling that way. No? Yeah, no. Rather that, than to be defensive and aggressive. Right. Because you're trying to block something where I have nothing to block. So why wouldn't I just try to understand their feelings and then explain to them, like, maybe there was a miscommunication in, in what was going on? What I like about me and Ty is that we're not very black and white in terms of like our way of thinking. We always think there's context to everything. Right. But actually, a lot of people are not like that. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. Sometimes I can't wrap my head around. I'm just like, it's not always this way. It There's always context to everything. Right. And I'm not sure if it's like because somebody's like negative or something that they only think one way. It's like if someone says, oh, you're... Um, you know how the word they say in relationships, you can't say you, 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 right? Mm -hmm. But if there's some context to you, sometimes you can't help but use the word you because it's like English. Right. Nothing is cut like that black and white. Like there's no way you can never use the word you. Exactly. You know, <laughs> there's no way. Actually, it's funny growing up, my parents didn't like me using the word you. Me neither. To them. Really? Yeah, I you couldn't. Too? I was not allowed to. Yeah. When I was like, oh, do you or you? And they're like, no. Yeah. It's no. disrespectful. Uh, yes. I had to refer for the longest time. I had to refer to my dad as father. I had to say dad. So my English I, I couldn't even bad. say dad, bro. I had to say father. <laughs> oh my, <God. laughs> Dude, my dad, I'll be like, oh, he. I'm not allowed to say he or she either. I have to say mom. So oh. like if if my mom and dad are both in the same room, I would have to say, oh, dad said oh. dad has to wash dishes. I can't say he said he has to wash dishes. <laughs> it must be an Asian thing. Cause, okay. Yeah. Now that I think about it, like, even like so like growing up in my household, I mean, I'm not the best at Vietnamese. I'm Vietnamese. Uh, but I would like like switch 
English and Vietnamese. It'd be mixed, right? Uh-huh. I don't know if it was the same for you, like in the household, or is it just straight Viet? No, it was all English. Oh, it was all English. Yeah. Okay, so for me, it was like mixed. So sometimes I would say stuff in in English. Sometimes I would say stuff in Viet, or even mix them in the same sentence. But I know whenever I had to refer to my mom and dad, I would say Ma or Ma. Mm-hmm. I would never. I could never say like you, him, or yeah, exactly. None of the pronouns, right? Like if you're talking to them, mm-hmm. you can't say, "Oh, are you guys going somewhere?" Yeah, yeah. yeah. You have to say. Is ma or ba going somewhere? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so no, horrible. I had to say, I think I would go, ma, ma, are you going somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> is that weird? It's kind of weird. And I would tell them growing up, I was like, wait, because I would get in trouble for doing that. I'm like, it's English. This is what we're learning in school. And my dad would be like, I don't care. This is how I want it said. Did they say it to you Asian parents, yeah. Yeah. They did, yeah. They're stubborn in that way, but... I mean, I guess it's just how they grew up. Wait, were you allowed to have a girlfriend? Because I didn't, I wasn't allowed to have a girlfriend and since co- until no. college. They said they never explicitly told me when or when not when or when I could ha- when or when not I could when I could have a girlfriend or not. It's okay, guys. Why, He's first time. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, what am I saying, bro? How do you feel? Are you nervous? No, I feel fine. Okay. I just couldn't find the words. But yeah, they didn't. They never told me that. Actually. They just like, well, my dad in particular, I don't think, actually, I don't think my dad cared. Now that I think about it more, uh-huh. I think my mom cared more than anything. Oh, it was my dad that cared. Because she would stalk me, bro. <laughs> like, she would try to find out, like, who I was meeting, like, when, you know, wild shit. But you're, I mean, it makes sense, your dad. Yeah. And it makes my sense. My dad would my literally mom. show up at school. I see his parked car there just to see <laughs> where I was going to go. That's crazy. It's like, like after anxiety. school, like yeah, during school. After school, I'll see his parked car there because I would take the bus home. I'm like, bro, if your car is there, why as well take me home? Yeah, what the? F- but he's following. He's like following me. He's to see checking you. Dude, one time, dude, imagine you had air tags <laughs> back in the day. Oh my god, dude! If if I like, feel bad for kids these days. Find my friends air tags. Mm-hmm. I'm so thankful it wasn't there when I was being no, bad. No, for real. Thank God. For real. Because no. I would be in like I I would just be trapped at home. Like, I couldn't go yeah. anywhere. They did put a tracker on me once. They did? Like, they actually bought, like, a tracker and put it in my car. But I was trying to go. heavily, like, highly inaccurate. <laughs> no, it was really accurate. Really? Yeah. Because it so, must have been expensive, no? My parents are Catholic, right? So I had to go to church every single Sunday. So every Sunday, I would just go to Wendy's because I knew there was a tracker <laughs> in my car. <laughs> I'd go to Wendy's, okay. order some Wendy's, and then I would sit in my car because church is usually, usually, like, 45 minutes to an hour. So I would sit for 45 minutes and eat my chicken nuggets <laughs> eat some cheeseburgers in the parking lot at church <laughs> 45 minutes was up and then <laughs> i went home and then, and then one time you know ash wednesday have you ever heard of that yeah, i've heard of it you had to put like this black um thing on your forehead it's like okay. chalk or something it's or a- no it's ashes it's ashes yeah, yeah. That's what i thought and um i didn't want to go to church that day so what I did was, um, you ever seen these like charcoal masks? Yep. So I would take a charcoal no, mask. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, that's smart. It is, right? That's smart. I took a charcoal mask and I put it on my forehead inside of a cross. And then because my dad would make sure only way he knew that we went to church on Ash Wednesday was that we he saw that cross on our forehead. And so when I when he came home, he's like, did you go to church? I was like, check on my forehead. Yo, I think that's why like, that's why I always say, I think asian kids like us like growing up we're just one we're really good at lying yeah i think like because we just had to learn how to lie yeah and then two we're just creative <laughs> of how we get around stuff because we have to yeah i know it's like, not like i actually want to be yeah, a liar it's not like i want to no. but you have forced me into a position where i have to do this now. exactly and then they call me they i get more in trouble because i mean caught mm-hmm. And then I'm and now caught I'm lying. And I'm bad. And now I'm bad. But if you just let me free a little bit, yeah. I wouldn't and lie. And trust me. Yeah. Because I think my dad's biggest thing, because he would never, like, he really didn't like me staying out late. He didn't like me, like, going, like, to meet friends. Because he was very afraid that I would make the wrong friends. Me too. And he was, I think he was afraid that I would be a gangster. <laughs> <laughs> like, like oh, for wrong. real. <laughs> you would have been. I would not have. No, been. I see you actually being Look a fuckboy. 
I'm not a gangster. No, you would be a fuckboy, though. I've never punched anybody. Fuckboy mentality. I don't have a fuckboy yeah, mentality. Yeah, fuckboy mentality. I have wholesome guy mentality. I say, I say you're wholesome. So, like, for the most part. But there are signs where your interactions with some women will say otherwise, die. Hey, I'm just really nice to everybody. Nice. Guys and girls. There's no way. Every single fuckboy I've ever met was a narcissist. Completely, well, overly confident goes with narcissism, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I would say. Yeah. Oftentimes. Very, very, like, cocky. They literally check themselves out. I dated a guy who would, like, I'm, like, talking to him. I don't know if I told you this. I had a microwave behind me, and it shows your reflection, and he was flexing to look at himself in the microwave. And then, like, he would tell me, wait, move real quick. I can't oh see. You're blocking God. my shot. <laughs> hey, I mean, like, okay, so I'm all for for being proud, you know, of your of your hard work, right? Because it takes a lot of work to, yeah. to get that physique, yeah, right? Yeah, true. And, you know, like, you see guys at the gym, they're flexing, checking out their, checking out their shit. Yeah. Because they put so much time into it and, and maintenance. But it's like, <laughs> when you're out in public... Like, come on, bro. You've seen it at the gym? I mean, I've seen guys go to the gym all the time. But what do you mean in public? Like, like in public as in like in everyday life. Oh, okay. Like, like you're at the grocery store and he's looking in the in the fucking glass door of the freezer section. Have you seen that? Have you seen that really? <laughs> no. Is that you? No, I don't do that. Look, I have nothing. <laughs> what am I going to no, flex, No, bro? you're looking at your left hand, your right hand, the tennis hand. Like, Oh, facts. Damn. Facts. And, and you're like in the reflection in the fridge. Like, Only this side, though. <laughs> so like I stand just half my body showing on the, on the, on the What I could though. be looking. If I put more tennis work into this arm. I'm only right-handed. I can't be left-handed. But yeah, if people like like looking at the microwave at themselves like say they're in the kitchen every day looking at the microwave i don't know especially if you're standing there trying to talk to them. Exactly. i'm assuming you're talking i was to talking to him yeah yeah see like that like you're actively trying to interact with this person but the only thing on their mind is my reflection i know my sister hated it because we would have like thanksgiving dinner and mm -hmm. he would be like hey does my voice sound deep and he's like <laughs> flexing and titty titty dancing in front of my mom <laughs> Bro, <laughs> what a chat. Hey, I liked him though because he looked like Tae Yang. So, Tae Yang oh, is quite the specimen, right? Yeah, he was really he your celebrity be. crush? Well, I mean, for he's male, not, for male, yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't really think about a female celebrity crush. Like I've always admired the guys more for some reason. Oh, really? I admire girls more. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I've always admired the guys more. It's even the same in games that I play. Like, people hella simp for, for female characters. But I'm just like, man, this guy's sick. Wait, <laughs> like, that's my cousin. So cool. He was playing Final Fantasy, like, okay. 14 or 15 or something. He yeah. dressed up his girl character, like, as a bunny. And, like, kind of, okay. like, be, like just, like, bra and undies. And he was having so much fun with, like, people checking her out. <laughs> I mean, I get that logic. I personally, I play, I play only male characters. I mean, I, I make myself male. I don't choose to be a female, but I can see why you would. Because I mean, like you think about it, you're playing that game for like eight hours a day. You want to be staring at a male character. Exactly. You want to be staring at a female character. That's true. You know, some people are like, Ty, are you gay? I'm like, like in Fortnite, because the way that they're running, some they used to the, make, they would make like the characters have really thick asses thick thighs yeah so then when they're running you're just staring at it the whole time that's why that, they did that on purpose for sure <laughs> <laughs> to little kids <laughs> yeah i know but dude little kids i think like because back then back then i feel like kids like in the 90s uh -huh. they probably thought pussycat dolls buttons was like hot but then when you look at music videos now compared to back then <laughs> Like it's way more raunchier. It's wild. Way more wild like Nicki than Minaj. how it was like back then. <laughs> yeah, fucking wild. There's like legit, legit ass twerking. Their whole bare ass. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely different. I think kids, sexuality wise, are growing up way faster now. 
And I think that definitely affects the relationship, like, expectations. It's so much different now. Right. Nobody is able, like, I always wondered, is it really possible to be with one person for the rest of your life? Because I don't know if, if that's, like, in our nature or if that's just what society is mm -hmm. forcing us to believe. I've heard about that, too. Like, the science behind that particular uh, stance because it's like I think definitely society plays a lot in the role of having one partner for the rest of your life that yeah idea but it's like I think I read somewhere like it's instinctive to have multiple partners in a way because you want to you know spread the the seed the seed <laughs> 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 yes yes you know you want to you know populate you yeah. want to create more to populate your species to, to make sure it lasts forever yeah so that's the instinct part yeah. of it, right but as a society we've obviously nav or gravitated towards having a single partner which i think is fine like some people really love that for sure some people don't some people have definitely multiple partners because they always i don't know if it's because the, the mentality nowadays is like Someone told me once, it was like, the grass, maybe it was you. It was like, the grass isn't greener on the other side. It's how you water. The grass is greener where you water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely true. I think growing up, we hear that we heard that a lot. But then again, we heard a lot of uh, a lot of sayings that were highly inaccurate, I think, growing up. Like what? Like, um, have you ever heard of the one uh, Jack of all trades? Master of none. Yeah, master of none. So, like, that is... That is shown to be like a negative thing, but Why? it's not. Being a jack of all trades, well, the full <laughs> saying of that is actually saying that a jack of all trades is better than a master of one. No, I thought it was being, I thought it was a bad thing if you were a jack of all trades and you're a master of none, because that means that you've tried, you can try everything, but you don't focus on one thing. Right. So that, that was, I think that is the, um, the misconception with that quote because you didn't hear all the quote it's the jack of all trades master of none oftentimes better than the master of one why because when you're only a master of one you can only do one thing but if you're a jack of all trades you can do five things but aren't we built to not be able to multitask you think so well i mean you're not multitasking you've acquired five skills rather than one it's like say you're playing a video game an rpg right yeah and you have five stats Okay. Are you going to put all your points into one stat? Okay. Well, if you put it that way, I can understand <laughs> that. But let, let's say, let's say this example here. Okay. What if, what if you're trying tennis, basketball, soccer, and pickleball? Okay. Right. And then you're trying everything. Right. But then you can't be a master. Okay. At all of it. You literally have to put all your energy into just one sport. Okay. Then you're a master at that. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you could say that. So you you could say that being a master of that is more important than having uh, being able to play those five sports, right? Right. But I think you could also say that the ability to play five different sports and gaining like the skills required for each sport is a lot too. But that's tough to do because you can't master all five. I mean, you don't have to master it though. Who says you have to master it? <laughs> okay, <laughs> you can play okay. it. And you can be well-rounded rather than practicing just one thing and having that one thing only. Right. Okay. Let's say this then. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I want to be, let's say I wasn't a streamer yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want, I didn't know what I wanted, but I wanted to be something. Okay. So I tried, um, <coughs> I tried podcasting, streaming. I tried being an Etsy seller or I tried, um, doing uber driving or <laughs> just just trying it all out okay and you just test it out because some people do it's really like they're very motivated in the beginning and so they want to just like test it out for one week and they're like really motivated and then they don't see progress and then they stop isn't that an example of like like basically you're not picking one thing to focus on even if you're failing at it you just have to keep going because you want to be mm -hmm. able to master that one area mm-hmm isn't that like 
wouldn't people admire someone that's able to do that over someone that just tries everything and then gives up? I don't think you have to give up. I think as long as you do something and you acquire those skills, it becomes a trade. So like, say you did try all these different avenues, but you decided to just stick to one. You're still technically a jack of all trades because you've are you know how to like, like with your streaming, right. And stuff. So you, you stream, you edit your videos and you do all that stuff. Mm -hmm. All those roles are, are trades. True. You don't do just one. True. Right. And I think that would be better than you only than if you only did one because you have more experience. Oh, now. true! Like only just streaming, right? You have way more experience, way more knowledge, and intimacy with your craft. Oh, okay. Right. So, like going back to like the sports thing, like yeah, you could just play tennis and then just excel in that. But by playing other sports, you kind of learn different things. You acquire different muscles. You learn different things, and that can also incorporate into your tennis as well. But you still, I would consider you a jack of all trades because you do know how to play all these sports. So it is technically not a negative thing. I always saw it as a negative thing. I was like, you don't want to be. I did too be. in the beginning. Oh. But I always was confused because even as a kid hearing that, I was like, but I want to be a jack of all trades. I want to be able to do X, Y, Z. Because like, say you're even talking to somebody, right? If you can do more things, you have more things that you can relate to this person. True. With. Yeah. If you only have one thing and that's your d defining feature of your life, who the fuck is going <laughs> to talk to you? You can't relate. Yeah, you can't relate. <laughs> you only have one thing. <laughs> that's so true. You know, where it's yeah. like. Then you'll find yourself boring. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And it's the experience, right? Whenever you do all of these avenues, you gain so much more experience than doing just one straight through that's very true right. well i learned so much i always thought it was a negative thing yeah so i always too. told myself i was like you don't want to be a jack of all trades you just want to focus on one thing but if i see it as like how you said it with my streaming stuff i was like mm -hmm. oh technically i am a you jack are a jack of all trades yeah because you're even doing this yeah this is another trade that you're acquiring the skills for that's true and like doing all this that shit's hard <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if they see it all this Nah, can't be me. <laughs> Wait, seriously? Yeah, audio stuff, I think it's quite Audio difficult. gives me a big headache, actually, yeah. Right? Yeah, you said you spent ages just trying to get it to I work. I was just headbanging, that's all. <laughs> it was supposed to be easy. Yeah, easy. And I thought you could just plug and play, but there's, like, some stuff I still don't even know. Like, what the fuck is audio in game? <laughs> I'm still learning. I don't know what that is either. I heard in the video, I was like, <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> All right, let me ask you this question. All right, shoot. When should you break up with someone if you start noticing some red flags? Mm, I think noticing the red flags in mm -hmm. itself is probably not the first, like the primary reason for you to break up with someone. I think you should definitely talk to them mm -hmm. because it could just be a misunderstanding, right? True. They could have a reason. So you talk to them and if, if their reaction maybe isn't to you, isn't like satisfactory then you can bring up the topic of breaking up someone i i don't like the idea of like oh yeah i'm gonna break up with you and then break up with them i think a discussion usually should be had just out of respect for for the person you're dating right i guess unless like they're hella toxic then yeah but see that's the thing is is like the toxicity Everyone, there's like a list of like toxic red flags. Right, stay different away definitions. From, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. That's like the thing about the black and white thing we talk about. There's context to it. Right. That's why you should talk. Yeah. Which I agree. And that's what like I did with the last guy that I did that was very toxic. My, mm -hmm. my thing is here's my method you date a guy, it usually takes me three months. Three months. Three months to know who All right. they are. All right. Let's so hear it. Fuck me over. <laughs> <laughs> Be toxic. <laughs> whatever okay. if you're good looking i'm gonna give you three months they oh <laughs> that's the prereq i'm gonna give you one Whoa. <laughs> but that's a that's a, it's um Ew, sorry, no that's guys. where that's where my toxic you know that's my problem no, you're toxic that's a red flag already on me on you yeah, yeah. i know okay <laughs> shut the fuck up okay and so no matter because in my mind i think maybe they need that chance to change because maybe for me i remember that like if someone my ex had given me a chance 
I used to be a very jealous mm. person, more okay. jealous than like I can be. But back then it was like, you working out with that girl, I'm mad. Like you're just working out next to her. She somehow she walks next to you and she's working out. You don't out. even know this girl. No, I don't. And I'm just mad. He don't even know no, this girl. Well, I mean, he does. It was like oh. part of a class, like a CrossFit oh, okay, class. Okay. And so, but then like when someone brings it up to you, then and then you hear other people bring it up to you and i'm like oh, okay like it is me i'm the problem let me change and it was already too late he didn't give me a chance to change it was like red flag we were, broke up but i had changed but so he didn't he didn't talk to you then he i mean didn't. he did but he didn't give me time he didn't give you a chance then yeah okay well that's different too like that's that's on him like you can give someone a chance just make sure you're not giving them so many chances where nothing's changed and you just keep hurting. Well, you see like that little sliver of change and, and it's hard to change. Yeah, yeah. So then in my mind, I'm like, well, if you're changing just a little bit, then I just got to give you more chances. I'm giving you, you see, that that's... flexibility. OK. All right. I, I see. I see where you're, I see where you're coming from. Before we end this podcast, I would like to still know about what we were what you had told me, Ty, about um, how to about? prevent crusty socks. That's crazy. That's crazy. He told me a story. He told me a story about there's how to prevent crusty and socks. Like, oh, you, he's has, <laughs> he has a technique down. <laughs> Shut up. Bro. Yeah, you told me. <laughs> that's, that's, we got to let the world know. The world doesn't need to know the technique. <laughs> Apparently, it, there's a, there's a, a, also, there's a different way you can shoot your your nut juice we're calling it nut juice okay oh yeah i know i've been <laughs> on your stream <laughs> there's a different way to shoot your nut juice based on this the foreskin around your d yeah yeah i mean i i i like to say that i'm a little a little ocd maybe a little a little bit of a clean freak sometimes can't let to say this <sighs> <laughs> but you know as a guy like when you're masturbating you always hear of the oh guys masturbating in a sock and they just leave their nut juice in the sock and it gets all crusty apparently you didn't know why i didn't know you didn't know socks are crusty because of that which is wild i thought crusty socks meant like they're just sweating a lot that's they just leave it out so it's crusty bro, sweat don't crust <laughs> <laughs> but why a sock though like why do people need to jizz in a sock why I not a shirt the sock is just <laughs> because it's like like a condom in a way, right? So I never wanted to use a sock even growing up because I just thought it was a headache to have the sock and then you got to clean the sock and then now I don't have a sock or I'm missing a sock for when I need to go like play tennis or something. And so I was like, nah, I'm not about that. And so instead, every time I would go, you know, to do my thing, I would instead take toilet paper and wrap that shit up like a mummy. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then use that to stroke and then when i nut it goes straight into the fucking toilet, toilet paper, paper and then you throw it away and i just toss it that's away. a waste of toilet paper by the way no it's not actually how much toilet pieces are you i mean using? i don't nut that much i don't masturbate that often so it's like i mean if you're masturbating every single day yeah probably you're using a lot of toilet paper i did tell him though um i had an ex who would stroke his d like he would probably jack off three four times a day to like that's a lot hub. and he was stroking so much that he had a foreskin he was uncircumcised and he would just keep jerking it that one day that whole skin just fell and went straight to the base of the d <laughs> <laughs> and so that's technically he basically on wait he he basically circumcised himself by jacking off too much <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Um, this is our second episode of Flow and Talk podcast. As you know, these are unhinged stories. So we'll be definitely having some random more stories like this. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.